Hello, my name is Davis and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk about the tech that everybody else has seemingly forgotten about. Over the past few months, we have looked at a variety of phones from my favorite defunct phone brand. Nope, not Hello Kitty by Sagem, but Palm. In my previous video, we unboxed a 16-year-old Trio 650 and let me tell you that it was wild. But as fun as that was, I hope that you guys are sitting down because today we are going to be doing something that's somehow even more exciting than that. Yes, you've read the title. We are unboxing the Palm Pre smartphone from 2009. In my opinion, this is Genesis. This is the phone that changed the smartphone industry forever and has become the template for smartphones ever since. I've already made a video about why the Pre was quite possibly the most influential smartphone ever made. But if you haven't, you can view that video from up there. But if you've already seen that, let's get to the main event. Let's get to admiring this box. And let me tell you that it has actually held up remarkably well. If the iPhone 13's box were to look like this, some might call it a bit strange. But let me tell you that there is no beauty without a touch of strangeness. Despite that, you can see that it would stand proudly on your mantelpiece as it does on mine, because I literally have two of these on my mantelpiece, or rather on the shelf of your local Sprint store. With this sort of cut off corner design, it almost looks as though it's sort of puffing out its chest out, ready to tackle, and then be immediately trampled by the Motorola Droid and iPhone, which is what happened. But anyway, you can see that the box is covered by this beautiful piece of plastic that was probably milled from a single piece of decomposed dinosaur or something. Um, but on the front, we can see that there's an image of the phone that sits proudly on the front. Some might say that's quite reminiscent of a certain phone box from Cupertino, but I'd say that Palm did it almost as well. I mean, there's no embossing and the, the iPhone had some embossing. But if we were to turn the box around, this is a really fun bit. We can see that no, this is not the original Sprint version that was launched on the 6th of June 2009, which is a fun fact, an anniversary that I celebrate every year. Rather, this is the GSM-02 German version that was launched just a couple of months later in October. Well, how did I manage to discover that? Well, there are some subtle identifying cues. Firstly, we can tell that instead of the Sprint yellow, this is in fact a lovely blue gradient. Yes, and if you look really carefully, you can tell that the writing, in fact, is in German. Luckily, my German is fantastic. For example, I can tell you immediately that over here, underneath features, it says that it runs Palm WebOS, which I can tell you is correct. And then it actually mentions activity cards, which is a feature that you might find quite familiar if you own an iPhone, an Android phone, a Windows phone, Amigo phone or a BlackBerry 10 phone. And if you ask me, to this day, nobody has still done it better. Below that, let's see what it says. It says, universal search. Wow, my German's fantastic. And this was a first for a smartphone. But after that, I'm afraid, my German starts to falter. As it says, eight gigabytes something. I'm just assuming that this means it's got eight gigabytes of storage, which is, uh, which is quite average for the day. But underneath this, my German gets even worse because it says it's got a three megapixel camera. Well, I assume that's camera, but I can't be sure because this camera starts with a K. Um, the iPhone 3G that this phone was benchmarked against had a two megapixel camera, so this is clearly better. But what Palm didn't consider was that the Pre was going to be delayed so much that by the time this had come out, the 3GS was about to launch also with a three megapixel camera, but with autofocus, which is, I guess, beat this. But over here, it says that, um, I assume that it's got an LED flash, which is um, something that the iPhone didn't have at the time. But after that, my, uh, my German uh, makes me struggle even more because it claims that it's got a 3.1 Zoll touchscreen. Zoll, I can only assume from context that that refers to inches because that's how many I, I mean, the, the pre has. Um, over here, it claims that it's got a 320 by 480 pixel, which I assume it means it's referring to the resolution of the screen. 
which was the same as the iPhone at the time. But because it was a little bit smaller, it was actually sharper than the iPhone and more colorful to boot, unless you viewed the screen from an angle because um, the viewing angles weren't exactly great. And then after this, we've got, uh, it says it's got some GPS and um, some boring things like Wi-Fi and WLAN. I have no idea what WLAN is. Now, on the other side of the box, let's see what it says, shall we? Okay, it's more German. And then on the back, wait for it, it's a picture of the back of the phone. Isn't that just incredible? Beautiful. Now, that's enough reading, and let's get opening. <laughs> okay, so this piece of plastic slides off, and then we've just got the box. Let's unveil it, shall we? Three, two, one. Oh, wow. Isn't the hardware just gorgeous? Let's just um, peel the plastic off, shall we? Oh, that sounds beautiful. Especially compared to the T-Mobile G1 and even the iPhone 3GS at the time. The smooth river stone shape of the Pre just looks incredibly elegant and is quite incredible to hold and behold. <laughs> Underneath the, um, the screen protector that we just peeled off, we can see the display glass, which is just very slightly curved. Um, if you look really carefully, you can see that the curve actually extends throughout the entire device, which just makes it incredibly ergonomic and makes for a lovely hand feel. Like, I just want to grip it so tight. It just feels fantastic. Also on the front of the phone, we've got a home button that sits in the middle of the gesture area, which is a touch sensitive area below the screen. And this is where you perform your famous WebOS navigational gestures. So like swipe back to go back and swipe up for multitasking. And um, you'd be quite familiar with this sort of idea if you use an iPhone or an Android phone today. But because the idea of gestures was just so unbelievably alien at the time, the inclusion of the home button was actually a last minute addition to make the phone just feel a little bit more familiar to original iPhone users who were just coming off from their two year contracts when this came out. But because the home button was essentially only used for like taking you to multitask, a task that could also be completed with a swipe up. Um, its removal on the sequel, the Palm Pre Plus a year later, was you know not an unexpected decision. But despite that, I do miss the home button sometimes because it's something that tells you which way is up. I mean, sometimes when I use my iPhone or my newer Pre, I'm just like, I'm holding like that and you know, there's no cue to tell you which way is the right way you're, you, should, you should be holding. Anyway, let's move around the phone, shall we? Um, so at the top, we can see that it's got uh, the power button in the corner and we've got a headphone jack. These are quite boring, but what's quite fun and what I like is this traditional palm ringer switch, um, which uh, palm was actually the pioneer of on their Trio phones. It's a feature that I'm quite glad is still found on iPhones today. And I feel that something else that Apple should really be copying from Palm is um, this annoying flap actually, which unveils. Let me just try to get the flap off. There we go. Once you remove the flap, you can see that it's the charging port. It's a micro USB port. In fact, this flap was so awful and flimsy and prone to breaking that it actually encouraged you to spend an additional $80 on something called the Touchstone, which is an optional wireless charging accessory. Yes, wireless charging in 2009. In fact, the Touchstone was not only the first inductive charger on a phone, but to this day, it's still the best in my mind, thanks to its ability to also act as a stand. So you can like rest like that or like that with the help of magnets that help align the phone so we don't have to, you know, wake up to an accidentally dead phone because you misaligned your phone to the wireless charger. In fact, we had to wait until 2020, 11 years after this phone came out until we got magnets on an iPhone. But wait, why is this not working, I wonder? Well, it's because the Touchstone bundle also came with a different back cover. See, the back covers are removable, as I shall do right now. So you press this button down here, 
you put your thumbnail underneath and it unclicks and the back cover comes off. Let me do the same with the other one. Incredible. The way that you identify a touchstone back cover compared to a standard um, pre-back cover is that you can see that it's coated in this soft touch coating which felt amazing while it was new but after 12 years of plastic deterioration um, it sort of feels less nice now because it's sort of become a sticky hideous mess. Um, while reviewers hated the glossy plastic um, 12 years ago, I think I'd take the glossy plastic today. Okay, so while the phone is still open, I can't... Oh, actually, this is fun. This is the difference between the GSM and the CDMA Sprint version of the phone. So the GSM phone, this is very fun, I know, has um, a SIM card slot over here. And on the CDMA, because it doesn't run on SIM cards, um, there's nothing. So fascinating. We're using the, um, C the GSM phone today. And over here, you can also see that it's got a removable battery. It's got a little tab and it says palm on it. Um, this battery is only 1150 milliamps in size, which is tiny. And as you expect, battery life was dismal. But now if we put the back cover on, the touchstone one, we can see that the magnet now works. So you can have it in portrait or landscape. Let's see if it uh, can hold the pre upside down. Uh, maybe not. Let's align it properly. It's a bit hard now that the plastic's so sticky. There we go. It's aligned. And then on the back of the touchstone as well, it's got this Gecko Feet technology, which allows it to um, just stick to just about anything. So it must, let's see if it sticks to the back of the box. And it does, just like that. Incredible. Um, a lot of people use these as car stands as well, so that is um, quite innovative, I'd say. But that isn't all with the hardware, because surprise, this phone actually slides. Yes, it has a physical portrait keyboard which is actually my favorite layout because unlike the ungainly sidekick landscape keyboards you can actually type with just one hand while some claim that it was cramped and um, with help from its gummy texture i actually find this quite accurate and responsive and isn't you know the worst to use of course the blackberry keyboard is a bit nicer but this isn't bad one niggling or rather quite major issue however was the build quality because Palm wasn't famous for its build quality. It was quite awful. For example, the edge of this keyboard over here was so sharp that it also doubles up as a knife. Yep, apparently it's so sharp that it could famously cut through a block of cheese. What's even worse than this, however, was the slider mechanism. While cool, because it's sort of, um, it's curved, so it conforms to the uh, shape of your face. Um, it's actually quite wobbly. It's so wobbly, in fact, that some compare it to an Oreo. And it's quite consistent between prees. So this one's quite wobbly. It's brand new, this one. And my old one over here, that's quite wobbly as well. Oh dear. Luckily, they did improve this with, um, with later versions of the Pre, but this early one just wasn't very good. Okay, so let's see if it turns on after all of these years. So I'm just going to press down on the home button over here. Let's see if it's got any power. Oh my god, it says Palm on it! I guess this shouldn't be a surprise. The 16-year-old Trio 650, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the video, turned on. So this slightly newer Pre, it's got battery. That's not a big surprise. But knowing WebOS and the Pre, this would probably take a fair few minutes to turn on. So while we wait, let's unbox the rest of the box, shall we? Okay, so we've taken out the phone, that this was the lid, and we've got this lovely um, plastic mold over here, which is um, quite high quality actually. It's, um, it's um, recyclable apparently. That's good. And beneath here, we have a lovely brochure with a folded corner over here, which um, I quite find lovely, but I'm sure is triggering for many librarians. Um, let's slide this off. Oh, isn't that nice? Orange. It says, um, Dwight Schrute probably over here. <laughs> and uh, oh, 
it folds out like an accordion. And over here, this is all in German, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's German. Um, but luckily there are some pictures that I can enjoy. Um, like over here, these are all the gestures teaches you. So uh, to all of those people who found it confusing, um, they obviously didn't um, read the instruction manual back in the day. Okay, what is next in the box? Um, we've got this, um, this piece of plastic which says palm and inspired by and designed in California. I wonder if this is reminiscent of any other California based company. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's recyclable as well. And to find out more, you can go on palm.com forward slash environment. I wonder if that still works. Probably not. And then on the bottom of the box, we've got all of the very fun accessories. You don't get so many accessories on a phone today. So let's see what the pre-included in the box. First of all, we've got this, um, this lovely um, micro USB cable. This is actually one of my favorite micro USB cables, funnily enough, because you know, it's not a reversible um, port. So sometimes you get, you, know, you get it wrong. But luckily with the palm cable, you know that the metal chrome bit is always on top. So that is great. Um, what else is in the box? You've got um, some headphones. These are three and a half millimeter headphones. Um, Palm at this point had only just recently switched to three and a half millimeter away from two and a half on the Trio Pro, which was the predecessor to the Pre. Um, that is a very fun fact. According to reviews at the time, these weren't bad, but um, I, I found them awful, so um, you choose. Also in the box, we've got the, I'm going to guess European charger. I'm not quite sure how a European charger looks like, but I assume it's this because it's a, a European box. Also in here, gosh, it's a little bit tight. We have the power brick. I love this, these palm power bricks because they have this lovely soft touch plastic, which hasn't deteriorated yet. And they're very small and compact, which I like. And they've got a nice smooth movement as well. Isn't that lovely? And then finally, this is the most exciting bit because usually when you buy a phone, you're sort of forced to uh, get a case, which can cost many dollars. Uh, with the original pre at least, you got a little slip case. Okay, so it's black with um, orange on the inside and yuck, that orange does not look good. But you can, um, so I'm just gonna use the original pre that I had. Um, you can just slip that in and you are protected from scratches. or well, at least most of your phone is apart from that because I did drop my pre many a time and uh, it would always drop on the exposed area. Anyway, so this case has um, palm embossed on it and it's got some contrast stitching. Next in the box, we've got this lovely corrugated um, effect cardboard which held all of the um, accessories in place. Um, it's, it's cardboard, so it's not plastic. That's good, I guess. And then finally, we've got some more documents on the bottom, which again, are all in German. Comment below if you, I should um, unbox a English version one day. And on the very bottom, we've got a surprise. It's a barcode. Um, I'm sure that takes you to many exciting places. Okay, now that we've, unbox the phone, let's look at the phone. Oh my God, it's finally booted up. And it's telling me to put a SIM card into the, um, into the phone. Oh, as you can see here, when I touch the screen, it does a little ripple effect. This was sort of like Palm's feedback um, because um, apparently it would make your clicks more accurate but it just ruined the frame rates while you were playing video games. Anyway, since this is an O2 phone, it's not unlocked. So to actually unlock the phone, I would need an O2 SIM card, which I obviously don't have. And uh, however, I, there are ways to unlock the phone. Oh wait, also I forgot, on the back of the phone, you've got a little mirror. So when you're taking a selfie, you can look at yourself. Unfortunately, this being Palm, it's not a good mirror. Because if you can see, it's, um, it's sort of a comedy um, theme park mirror where everything is distorted. Um, so that probably didn't help a lot of people's um, self-confidence. 
Anyway, so that is the entire unboxing experience. Oh, it's run out of battery now, it's shutting down. And there we have it, an unboxing of a brand new Palm Pre 12 years after it came out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. For the next video, I've secured something even more exciting, if you can believe that. And it is a brand new Pre 3. So we've just unboxed the original Palm WebOS phone, and now this is the final Palm WebOS phone. And um, this version is incredibly rare. It's the unlocked European one, I think. And um, because previously I've bought the AT&T version with a really ugly box, and this is the European one with the original beautiful box. Okay, so definitely subscribe if you want to see that. And um, if you guys have any memories of the Pre or Palm in general, be sure to tell me in the comments because I do love reconnecting with the WebOS community because I used to be obsessed. Otherwise, if you want to keep up with me elsewhere, links to my socials, including my Instagram, and also my brand new website are in the description too. But until next time, toodaloo.